In this video, I will teach you how to pronounce this word correctly. So don't go away. Hi everybody and welcome back to Lean English. I'm Ed and I'm here to help you achieve your pronunciation goals. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the word often. Or is it pronounced often? To answer this question, I'm going to explain how elision works in individual words. So let's look at some examples in a bit more detail. A long time ago, English speakers used to pronounce every letter in a word. So no was probably pronounced cano, and often was probably pronounced often. As the language developed, some of these sounds were elided to make pronunciation easier, and words like no and often acquired the pronunciation that we're familiar with today. However, the spelling of these words remained the same because it had already been fixed in books, and there is no regulating organisation for the English language. This is known as historical elision, and it explains why lots of words have silent letters in English. So if the letter T is silent in the word often, why do some speakers pronounce it often? This is an example of hypercorrection, which is when someone uses a non-standard form in the belief that it's more formal or correct than the standard form. Although this is a frequently cited form of hypercorrection, it's so common now that both forms are generally accepted as equal. So both often and often are correct, and you should use whichever you prefer. When the t and d sounds appear between consonant sounds, they're usually omitted to make words easier to pronounce in connected speech. So words like friendly and tense are usually pronounced friendly and tense. This means that these words have an ideal form, which is used in very slow, careful speech, and an elided form, which is used in normal conversation. Where two forms of a word exist like this, it's known as contemporary elision. The opposite of elision is epenthesis. This is when people insert sounds which don't exist in the standard form. This commonly occurs when a plosive is inserted between nasal and fricative sounds. So a word like tense might be pronounced tense. Consequently, this could easily be confused with the word tense, with which it forms a pair of homophones. But remember that it should be clear from the context what the speaker means. It should be obvious by now that English pronunciation varies, and sounds can be inserted or removed. This means that some words, like often, have more than one form. If more than one form exists and you're unsure which form to use, I recommend you imitate native speakers who you know or trust. Well, that's the end of the lesson. Thanks very much for watching. Can you think of any more words that have more than one form? Let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.